I've already gone over how to field strip this gun and clean it in the previous video. This is a H&K USP 45 with the X200 light attached. Things I like about this gun, it's very ergonomic. It has a very natural point and it's easy to take down and clean. Out of all my guns, this is my favorite one. I've fired the most rounds through it and I have yet to have a major failure with it. It's got a double single action trigger, which means that most of the time you'll be shooting in single action. It's got an ambidextrous index finger magazine release, which is fantastic. You can use either your thumb or your index finger to eject the magazine. It's got tapered double stacked magazine, and one of the best finishes in the business. Which leads to few scratches and no rust on this gun. Things I don't like is a lack of a standard rail, but that's not a big deal, just buy an adapter. The next gun we're going over is the Desert Eagle. This one's the most difficult to take down. First, lock back the slide. Then on the left side of the frame, there's a button you need to press, which allows you to rotate the switch on the right side of the frame. Then just ride the slide forward. The barrel comes off, the slide comes off, along with the guide rod and spring. Then remove the pin. It goes back approximately the same way. Great thing about this gun is it comes in large calibers like 357 Magnum, 44 Magnum, and 50 AE, and there's surprisingly low recoil for these large calibers. There's a toolless takedown, gas operation increases accuracy, as does the single action only trigger. It's one of the few handguns that can fire around that matches the ballistic energy of a rifle. It's also very expensive to buy and expensive to shoot. It's large and heavy, which does not make it good for any type of carry, open or concealed. Next is one of the most common handguns in existence, the Glock. To field strip the gun, you must pull the trigger, so make sure you clear the chamber before you do anything. There's plenty of videos on YouTube that show you how to take down the Glock, so instead I'm going to talk about the gun. It's probably the simplest semi-automatic handgun to operate with complete lack of manual safeties. And a fairly simple toolless takedown. Glocks are some of the cheapest handguns you can purchase, and they're some of the most reliable. They too have one of the best corrosion resistant finishes in the business. Some problems I have with the gun is the double action only trigger, which requires more practice to sustain shooting proficiency. Another thing I don't like is the grip angle. When you hold the Glock next to almost any other gun, you'll notice that the grip is angled slightly further back. This causes the natural point of the gun to be higher than most guns. The next gun here is a Fabrique Nationale 57 or FN57. To take this gun down, make sure it's empty, pull back the slide a little bit, and the tab on the left, pull back that as well, and the slide will slide off. Inside, the barrel, guide rod, and spring are all one piece. The gun fires a 5.7 millimeter bullet, which looks like a small rifle round. It's the same bullet that the P90 uses. It's a light round, so the gun has very little recoil, but it's high velocity, so it can still do a good amount of damage. The unique location of the safety allows for easy pairing with almost any holster. The last gun I'm going over today is my H&K P2000SK, which is a subcompact version of the P2000. The takedown is almost identical to the USP, so I won't go over that. It has many of the same features as the USP in reliability, finish, and magazine type. Internally, there's a dual stage recoil spring, which is great at reducing the felt recoil. I used the P2000SK as my daily carry for over two years and never had a problem with it. The only issues with this gun is that it's small, but that's the nature of getting a subcompact. It's also not available in 45, which is my favorite caliber, but I'll manage with 40s.
over the last couple of weeks I got some shipments in of items I'm going to be using in future videos. Bullets, powder, and a chronograph. I've also already started using a new tripod. Hopefully that will help with some of the video stability. More videos are on their way, so please subscribe and favorite this video if you liked it.